B'shem Hashem Ne'asev Nasliyah. We left off last week in Sha'aret Teshuvah, chapter one. The subject we left off with was we were safe. We ended up with safe gimel, which is paragraph gimel, third paragraph, where Rabbeinu Yona was explaining the severity of a person that prolongs doing teshuvah or passes it off and doesn't repent for averot, for, for <coughs> sins. And what happens is in the long terms, in the long term, the punishment, the severity of the punishment becomes more and more as the person doesn't do teshuvah. It's like the avera keeps building up as this person refuses to do teshuvah. Now, where we are safe Dalet, fourth paragraph, he's going to go further. And he says, Ve'od. If you guys want to open those windows, it'll get some wind in here. Ve'od hitponen. If we look further, into the negativity of a person that pushes off doing teshuvah, <coughs> in, in the severe, the badness, the wrong of pushing off teshuvah, it is greatly wrong. It is ra'a. Why? Because if he hadn't, if he or she, okay, we're not, we're not saying only men make mistakes, okay? So we're going to be like, he or she, this is the one time I'm going to do the he or she in every court. If he or she would not have pushed off this teshuvah, what would have happened? By now, he or she would have bitterly, would have been sighing bitterly, with anxiousness and sadness and worry. And his, and, and his, um, his eyes would be, he's very, like we said, he's very poetic. His eyes would have been um, a flowing with sorrow, which means what? When a person makes a mistake, we do something wrong. We have two choices. One is to ignore the fact that we just did something wrong and you know, give it some time. Uh, it hit me hard. I'll just give it some time. It, it was an experience to learn from, you know, like we said last week. You know, it's like it was wrong. But I'm so glad I had that experience. If we feel like that, and it just we, we prolong it, <clears throat> and we don't do teshuvah, we, um, we, we miss the chance to have that bitter feeling of teshuvah in our mouths. What does that mean? When you do teshuvah, when you actually realize and recognize the wrong that you've done, when a person realizes that they've made a mistake and they actually come and repent to themselves, they actually do teshuvah, there's that really bad, horrible feeling that a person has. You have a horrible feeling like, oh, I can't believe I did this, I, I expected more from myself, I trained for, or whatever it is. You know, This is not the way I was raised, this is not the way I learned. Whichever way your mind works to help you do teshuvah. And when you do that, there's this, it, it gives you this bad feeling. Right? It, it doesn't feel good to feel horrible about yourself. So you bring yourself to that point. You bring yourself to the point of recognizing that you've done bad and bring yourself to the point of having this negative feeling about yourself, this bitter taste about the avera, about the sin that was just committed. So therefore, this is brilliant. Now, if once again the same Avera comes upon him, surprises him, right? And once again he has an opportunity to sin, and he's being uh, 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 swindled by the Yetzar Hara to once again come and do the same Avera, he'll be stronger to overcome his Yetzar Hara. He'll be able to more overcome his evil inclination. 
he'll remember that bitter drink that he drank, the teshuvah that he did, the bitter feeling, the horrible feeling he had. And now that he has a second chance to do the same avon, he'll be like, ah, you know what? I remember what I went through the last time I made this mistake. I, 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 don't, I don't want that anymore. You know how, you know, even, even now, <clears throat> if you go eat something and you get a stomach poisoning, you know, food poisoning from something, right? There's like a, you know, your mom, <laughs> your mom makes some kind of asher and, and it might not even be bad. Maybe you had something before it that was also sardi. No one's going to understand what I'm saying now. But maybe you had something before it that kind of did not go well with the asher and you got, you know, you, you got bad food poisoning. Everybody else was fine. You got food poisoning from having asher Or for everybody else that's watching, bad cholent. I don't know, osh polo, wherever, whichever section of the world you're from, imagine a food that you really liked at that point. And you get food poisoning from it. What's going to happen? Sometimes for months, years, you can't have that food anymore. Even if you didn't mind the food before, but just this, the taste, the smell reminds you of how sick you got afterwards. And it's nothing bad, but it's just natural. You know, you could have a drink. I know someone that can't drink tequila. Because at some point when he was young, he went too far drinking tequila. And he got so sick from drinking te tequila that now he smells tequila, he gets sick. He can't do it. It just, it, it, it's, it, it doesn't work with the system anymore. How far did he Why? <laughs> far. <laughs> so far. But that's what it is. Teshuvah should give us that bitter taste in our mouths. Teshuvah should give us that bad experience. Like you made a mistake, you do such teshuvah, you bring yourself to a, such a point where you're like, you feel so horrible that the next time you're presented with the same avon, with the same avera, with the same challenge, you'll be able to overcome it only because, not because you don't like the sin anymore, but because you don't like what the aftertaste. You don't like how you got sick over it afterward. Maybe sinning more so we have a <laughs> oh, you use that example horribly. No, it means that you should do teshuva more. So that from when you bring yourself to feel horrible about the sin that you made, that teshuva, you don't want to go through it anymore. If you're really doing true teshuva, meaning really truly repenting, you know, crying and actually asking for forgiveness, who wants to do that over and over again? You feel sick of yourself. And how many times can I make the same mistake? I don't want to go through that anymore. I don't want to go through the thought of, am I going to be forgiven? Am I not going to be forgiven? How many times can a person go through that? So therefore, when you don't prolong and you do teshuvah right away, you repent for the sin right away, you get to actually feel that taste. When you, when you leave it and you don't do teshuvah right away, after a while we'll see. All right. You think of reasons why you don't even need to do teshuvah. We'll see. He says, He remembers, or she remembers, this, this bitter tasting thing that he just had before, and he's not going to want to repeat it again. He's not going to drink that. Like it says, In Tehillim, he translates, Rabbi Yonah translates this, Rigzu means to work on, or, or, or go, there's different meanings of it, but here, Rabbi Yonah, Rigzu, He's, he's translating as to tremble. He says, Rigzu al techetau. Tremble and do not sin. This is talking about future. Meaning, it's talking about not committing something in the future because of the past. Rigzu, you don't, it's not about fear, it's about tremble. What do you tremble about? You tremble about a thought from the past. Something that makes you tremble is about something that happened in the past. So you're trembling because of something in the past, and you won't make the mistake. So give yourself that opportunity to really feel the pain of having sinned, so that in the future, when that opportunity rises again, you'll be able to hold off. <clears throat> Suffer and tremble for what mistake you made, and do not make that mistake anymore. Kizkir chet. Okay. Like we see in Barashit, Yosef at Sadiq, when his brothers came to Egypt and he took his brothers through that whole ordeal of not knowing it's Yosef, it's Naya, what's going on? Why, why is he taking us through all of this? 
And then finally he tells them, Ani Yosef, I'm Yosef. And the brothers realize their mistake. They realize what a huge mistake they made by trying to kill their brother, not only that, and then <coughs> actually selling him as a slave to Egypt. And then seeing that he actually ended up being the advisory of Egypt. Not only were they mistaken, they were hugely mistaken about their brother Yosef. How do the brothers feel? <laughs> how, how, how do the tribes feel at this point? You wouldn't want to be in their place. I don't think anybody at that moment wanted to be in their place. They mamash felt gehinam. It, 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 no one would want to feel like, oh my gosh, 22 years have passed and look at what the mistake that we made. All the suffering their father went through, Yaakov Avinu, everything, all, all of that weight came on the shoulders of the brothers. So what does Yosef tell the brothers when they're going back to get their father? He says, okay, go now, go bring my father, go bring him, because I want to see the whole family. He says, al And he translates it, he says, do not tremble on the way. Meaning, don't start thinking about the past and all the mistakes that you made. It's not the time for it right now. You do that, you're going you're gonna to take your eyes off the actual ball here. That's not what we're doing. Forget it. I've forgiven you. Let bygones be bygones. Don't even think about the past. Right now, just think about the future. Don't tremble on the way. Don't start thinking, oh my gosh, you see what we did? We shouldn't even go back home. How are we going to go tell our father? What are we going to do? So he's telling them, that feeling of trembling that you're going to have about your mistake, don't, even, don't, don't let it get you. Go do what you need to do. So he says, that's why he translates it here also. He says, you should, in Teshuvah, you should have that feeling. You should tremble. And that trembling will help you in the future not to make that mistake again. If you look at me, your mistake, you'll be like, okay, I made a mistake, sorry. Then the next time, you're probably going to be more prone, you're going to make it again. If you don't feel bad about you and making a mistake, what's to say you're not going to make the same mistake again? <coughs> and he says, and more so, when a person... When a person prolongs his time to do teshuvah, he takes his time to do teshuvah. When once again sin comes before him and he has a challenge again, he has, a, he has an opportunity to sin, he's going to fall prey to the same sin again. Now this is a huge deal. It says when you do the sin the second time, when a person makes the avera, he falls prey to the Avara and he commits the Avon, commits the sin a second time, a third time, because we didn't do Teshuvah. And the first time we committed the sin, oh, oh, oh. The severity of the punishment and the Avon becomes doubled and tripled. Same Avara, same Avon, same sin. But because we refused to do Teshuvah, what happens is now the severity of the Avon is even bigger than the first time. Number one is the first time you had something working for you. You know what it was? So, oh, I got fooled by the Satan. The Yetzer Hara got me. Uh, you know, at least you had that going for you. Second time, you can't say that anymore. You had the opportunity the first time to make changes so that doesn't happen anymore. To do Teshuvah, but you didn't. So you know what? The second time, you don't have that kind of... Uh, a, a curve in the rule for you to have less of an avon. Now you're going to get the full. And more on top of it. And this evil will go before Hashem. The first time he wasn't thinking because the Yitzhar Hara got him. You know? Like we said before, the Yitzhar Hara is really good at what he does. He's been doing it for thousands and thousands of years. He's a pro. You guys, did I tell you about the Chafetz Chaim and the Yetzer Hara? It's Salicho time. It's a good time to tell you. Chafetz Chaim in, you know, freezing cold Russia. He was in his <coughs> old age. He, he said this to his Talmidim. In his old age, he was home. Early in the morning, he wakes up uh, in the morning. You know, these Tzadikim woke up what time? I don't know, week out morning. It would have probably been middle of the night. Woke up to get ready for his learning, right? And the Yetzer Hara in his mind, this is happening in his mind. The Yetzer Hara says, come on, 
Who's going to expect you to be on time? Who's going to who, who's going to say, "Oh, I can't believe Chavetz Chaim was late." You're old. You know, you've done so much already. Take five more minutes. This is in his mind. What we call our subconscious, right? It does that to us all the time. Like, Allah pain de Nothing happened. You know, five minutes. This was happening in his mind. You know, take five more minutes. Go to sleep. No one's going to, you're old. So he says in his own mind, he says to the Satan, he says to the Yetzar Hara, you know, who's older? You or I? <coughs> You've been around for 5,000 years. You take a nap, I'll go. Okay? And the Chavetz Chaim gets the koach to get out of bed. This is how you battle the Yetzar Hara. I said this many times, and I'm going to say it again. Don't go head on with the Yetzar Hara. You will lose. The Yetzar Hara is much stronger than us. He's a malach. He's been doing this for a long time. The only way to be able to beat the Yetzar Hara is to find ways of maneuvering around the stumbling blocks that he puts before us. And that's by doing the things that the Rabbeinu Yonah is telling us. By, by making it so that the next time you'll have certain things working for you that won't be that difficult. Because if you say, that's it, that's it, I'm never, yeah, sure. You know, it's always going to like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick up. <laughs> it's like, it's not happening, right? The Chavetz Chaim knew this. Who plays games with the Yetzar Hara? But it works because it's in our subconscious. Have a little conversation in your mind and you're, you're done. So it says, the first time, okay, the Yetzar Hara beat him. After he saw how weak he is and how the Yetzar Hara got overpowered him, he's so much stronger. He should have recognized, he should have realized that he's, he's got nothing. He's got no ammunition. You know, he's got no, uh, 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 um, what's it called? Um, shield, right? Your, your antivirus is completely down. He should have realized that now, okay, I got, I got, you know, my computer got a virus once. Now I have to get a different kind of antivirus or do the upgrade or whatever it is. You need to, as soon as that happens to you, you need to... Work on a solution. Do things that will bring you to more fear of God, fear of heaven. There's many things a person can do to bring themselves to the level where you're going to be an upgrade of your last, you know, version. <coughs> and the upgraded version is going to be much more difficult to fool. If you did not upgrade yourself, if you're going to be the same person the Yitzhar Hara got once and you're going to just stay where you are, then he's going to get you again. And this time it's going to be worse than the first time. V'amar Shlomo alav ha-shalom. Shlomo HaMelech says, Kekelev shav al ke'o kesil shoneh be'ivalto. Shlomo HaMelech alav ha-shalom with his chokmah. He says, a person that repeats the same avara twice, three times, is like a dog that goes back to eat its own vomit. I don't know if you guys have seen a dog do that. I have seen a dog do that. Dogs do that. But you have to understand, a dog naturally will eat anything. Dogs will eat anything and will eat as much as they possibly can until they get sick. Dogs have no limit to eating. They'll eat as much as you feed them. They have so many goods, this is the worst about a dog. They'll eat until they get sick. They don't know when to stop. And they'll eat literally anything. They'll chew on anything, right? So already a dog doesn't eat right. Already half the things a dog eats is junk. Imagine, imagine throwing that up and then eating it again. So Shlomo Melech Bechokhmato is saying, sinning already is disgusting as it is. But not preventing yourself and doing it again is like the dog. You just ate your own vomit. It was bad enough sinning the first time, now you just did it again. That's how a person has to feel about doing Averot. You have to feel disgusted. If we haven't brought ourselves to feel that way, that means we're not doing it right. We haven't been doing Teshuvah correctly.
Now we have to understand, all of this that we're saying, if we're saying that if he does it again, if a person sins again after not doing teshuvah, it gets worse and worse. What if the person does teshuvah the first time and then commits the avara again? What then? Good question, no? Yes. What, if, what, what then? So then it's not the same. Then that, at that point you could say, okay, even tzaddikim make mistakes. We make mistakes. The point is, did you learn from your mistake? HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, okay, you made a mistake. The Satan got you. you. But you did Teshuvah. He got you again. That's fine. At least you're recognizing that you're making a mistake and you're working on it. Okay, the Satan was stronger than you again. Yeah, I know. I hired him. You know? <coughs> what? No, it does not. Un that's the point. It does not undermine the original Teshuvah. Because you did Teshuvah wholeheartedly. That's the point. You can't be like, okay, the deal is I have to do teshuvah so the second one won't be bad. <laughs> so I'll do teshuvah so I can do it again. You know, unfortunately, God knows all of our thoughts. You can't come to Yom Kippur and go, Hatati, Aviti, I was Machalel Shabbat, I ate non kosher, and then be like, when is Yom Kippur over so I can go to Chipotle? You know, it, you know it's like uh, people thinking to themselves, no, not now, it's Selichot time, after. <laughs> you know, after Selichot is over, I can't do this, after. Come to me after. So like, that's Lashon Hara. I'm not talking Lashon Hara now. Come to me after Yom Kippur. You'll see, if I tell you what this guy did, you know, it's like, it's not, you, 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 need, you need to understand that only you, only you can prevent forest fires. <laughs> Now you know how good that commercial was if the fact that I say only you brings that up. Anyway, you have to understand that only you have the koach. Only you know what your intentions are, what your heart is telling you. No one else. You and HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Hashem knows within you what you're actually feeling. If you're actually doing a teshuvah because you're really sorry or you're doing teshuvah and you're thinking to yourself, <laughs> I have to do it because it's Yom Kippur, but I'm going to do it again. Right? We did on the first shiur, we talked about the fact that HaKadosh Baruch Hu also forgives uh, partial teshuvahs. Right? You do a teshuvah saying, Hashem, look, I'm really sorry about this. I hate doing it. I can't stand doing it. I hate myself every time you cry. But honestly, I don't know if I can stop. I don't know, but I regret every moment I've ever done it. But I don't know if I can stop. That's also teshuvah. It's partial, but it's accepted. However, it's not a full teshuvah, right? But then doing teshuvah saying, no, I'm gonna do it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do it, but I, I'm gonna do teshuvah now, but I'm gonna do it again. And that's, it's a whole different ball game, right? Now, second, hashenit. Ki bechet o. This is where it gets a little uh, nice. I drink lahayim to everybody here. Cheers. 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 And everyone watching, I guess. Ki ashonah bechato, a person that repeats, a repeat offender. Teshuvato kashem. That person's teshuvah also becomes harder. You think to yourself, okay, I'll do it. Now, right now, I'm on, a, I'm on a streak right now. I'm on a roll. So let me do this a couple of times, a few times, do this avera, whatever it is, right? I'm going to go, I'm gonna go to Vegas for like a few years, every week. <laughs> and then I'll do teshuvah in like three years, you know? Right now, I'm kind of on a roll, you know? Whatever it is, think of one of those things that you're not so proud of. And think to yourself, okay, that, that's the avera. Chas shalom. But here's the problem. When that time comes, let's say, there is a time limit. Teshuvah is going to be extremely, extremely difficult. The more time passes, the harder Teshuvah becomes. Why? Why does Teshuvah become hard after a while, after time has passed? Anybody? You forget the feeling of bitterness, like we said, yes. But this is second. He's saying now second. That was first. Second, yeah. It becomes a habit, the thing you're doing, it just becomes 
becomes a habit, I'll give you one better. The, the language that the Gemara uses is unbelievable. Once I tell you, you're going to be like, well, well, what? He says like this, Ki na'asa lo hachet keheter. Because the sin now becomes permissible to you. Because when you keep repeating an avera, you don't look at it as an avera anymore. I'll go one further. I'm nobody to go further. I'm just saying for myself, I believe in our society, I think this is true. Forget that it becomes a heter, it becomes permissible to you. In our day and age, it becomes a mitzvah. You know, the guy's going to be like, not nah, Baba, it's not even wrong, it's healthy for you. This is good. Do you know how many people have said this is amazing? You're supposed to be doing this? It's like, are you, are, you, are you out of your mind? But that's what happens. When you keep repeating the same avera, it becomes like as if like, you know, it's a part of life. It's a habit. It becomes a part of life. So you won't even think about what you need to do teshuva for. You're, not, you're no longer thinking about it. I want to ask everyone in this room right now, including myself, think about it. It's Yom Kippur. Tomorrow is Yom Kippur Be'ezrat Hashem. Be'sha'at Have you th Have you felt like, okay, what do I do Teshuvah for? You actually have to start thinking about, okay, what do, what do I want to do Teshuvah for this year? Right? We all have so much to do Teshuvah for, but so much of it is such routine that we actually have to sit down and be like, okay, what am I doing wrong? Those are the things that actually need Teshuvah. That's why he's saying it's so difficult. Because it becomes such routine in our lives. It's like, you know, it's, it's, I, don't, I don't know. I've, I haven't murdered anyone recently. Not that I know of. You know, I haven't, uh, 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 I don't know. you think of all the worst things in the world? I haven't stole, robbed any banks. Not that I know of. I'll ask my wife if she did because of the shopping sprees that she's been throwing. Um, and then, no, so I guess, I'm, 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 I'm pretty good, I'm the king of the world, you know, I'm, I'm doing fine. I don't even know what I'm gonna do Teshuvah for. That's why, we, that's why they feel, no, I don't do to Kenisa. Kenisa is for sinners, you know, I'm okay. You know, but, huh? <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it, but that's, that becomes a natural part of us. It becomes a part of us to a point where we don't recognize that we have wrong things in our lives. That's why Hitpudedut is so, so crucial. Hitpudedut, where a person sits in a room, think to yourself, really go deep within ourselves, and really think, think about our lives, where, where, we, where we've come from, where are we, where are we going, like we spoke about last time. We said, he says, Tzadikim, don't put their heads on their pillow at night unless they do Teshuvah. That's how we have to be. That's, that's the way it should be, right? What does that mean? That means every day you have to be thinking, what did I do today that I'm not so proud of? Now we're doing it once a year, come on, you got 12 months of stuff that we have to think about. Obviously it becomes difficult, especially if we're repeat offenders. We keep, you know. Is that why you say Kriyat Shema every night? <coughs> Kriyat Shema we say every night, yeah, part of it, yes. And then we forgive people and, you know, and we do vidu every night. That's the reason. Because we, sh we shouldn't go to bed without doing, uh, um, you know, a teshuvah. But that itself is very general. You have to actually think, well, wow, what did I do today that I'm not so proud of? Well, uh, what do I want to fix about my day tomorrow? But there's some stuff you need to do that you actually haven't done. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Bezrat Hashem. So, uvazeh. And when a, when a chet, when an avera becomes so natural, when it becomes so routine for the person, it becomes extremely severe. Shenemar, like it says, it's, it's in Yirmiya. Yirmiya says, now you, you did these wrongs, and you were able to. What does it mean, and you were able to? You did these wrongs, batuchal, and you were able to do them. Okay, just say, you did these wrongs, you did these raot, evils. But it says you committed these evils and you were able to. Be'ur batuchal, what does batuchal mean? Ki raot na'asot lecha keheter. 
these wrongs, these evils became like heter to you. They became permissible to you. Not only did you do them, but you were capable of doing them, meaning it, it came so easy to you. As if you're not even doing anything wrong. A bank robber, the first time, feels really bad. There's that rush, you know? It's like, oh my god, I just robbed the bank. Third, fourth time, <laughs> walk in a park, you know? They owe me this money. They'll get the money from insurance. God knows, whatever different reasonings why, you're, you're the victim. That's what Averot are. Right? You do them a few times, you can't bring yourself to hate yourself so much for doing so much wrong, so you'll find reasons why, are, why you're not really doing anything wrong. And this word, Tatukhal, like it says, Uqtavar shahu it's like something that it's in your presence, it's, it's, it's for you to do, you're allowed to do. By Maaser Shani, it says you should not eat it, you know, uh, there's places that you're allowed to eat Maaser Shani. There's places you're not allowed to. But over there it says, you cannot, it should really say, you should not. But over here he says, here also, it means you shouldn't be able to. You're not able to. It's wrong. You shouldn't do them. And I'll explain it to you like this. And the Targum over there, Targum Unkul says, Let lach reshu. You have no permission. You should not, you're not allowed to do this. Vamur Rabotenu, our rabbis tell us, Zichonam Racha, Kevan Sha'avar Adam Avera Vashanaba, Nasad Loketer. A rabbis in Kedushin say, Once a person does an Avera and repeats it and repeats it, it becomes like a heter, permissible. And they, they also said, Ali Sha'avar Avera Vashanaba, I'm going to blow your minds away. The Gemara Kedushin, same Gemara says, once a person becomes a repeat offender and he keeps doing that same Avara over and over, right? And this is without doing Teshuvah. It becomes like a heter, it becomes permissible to that person. Oy vey, oy vey. I'm almost like scared to say this. We have a general rule where if a person wants to do Navara and for some reason it doesn't happen, they don't do it. But they had the Makshava, they really wanted to do it, but, but, but something comes up and they didn't do it. Right? Our Chachamim tell us that does not count as an Avera. He wanted to do it, but he wasn't capable of doing it. Something came up, his mom called him. Uh, uh, I don't know, his car, he was going to do something really bad, his car got a flat, and he's like, you know, okay. But if he wouldn't have gotten the flat, he was on his way to do it. Could be Siyat, whatever it is. Whatever it is, but he wanted to do it. He doesn't get the Avera. It doesn't count as an Avera. But, if you're a repeat offender and you kept doing it and doing it, when you had the machshava to do it and you didn't do it, you still get the avera. You get burnt for something you didn't even do. After the first and third time, whatever. After you became a repeat offender of doing the same avera over and over, and then you're about to do it again for the fourth time, third time, whatever it is, and it just doesn't happen. No. But you were, you, were, you, were, you were there to do it, but it doesn't happen. That's because you haven't done Teshuvah, it counts as an Avera again. Ve'alav ne'mar, and on that it says, Yirmiyahu, Hina anochi mevir ra'a el ha'am hazeh peri machshavotam. And Yirmiyahu says, I will bring evil on this nation, which is the fruits of their machshavotam, of their thoughts. Meaning they're getting punished for their machshavot. For the for the for their for their ta- thought, thoughts. Now that if that's not a chidush, I don't know what is. It's crazy. For a mitzvah, you wanted to do a mitzvah, you weren't able to do the mitzvah, you get the mitzvah. You get it. Because your kavanah was, you wanted to do the mitzvah. You're about to give somebody a ride, you see them on the side of the street, you're about to give them a, give them a ride. Their Uber comes and you realize, oh, they had an Uber. That's why they were standing there. You get the mitzvah, giving the person a ride. It's as if you gave them a ride. Avera, this opposite. You're about to hit the guy on the curve of the street. Their Uber comes and picks them up. You don't get the avera. 
But if it's your third time hitting that fat talk on the side of the street, and this time you weren't able to, <laughs> right? You still get the avera. Why? Because you're a repeat offender. Because there is no way if that accident or whatever it is would not have happened, you would have stopped. Because now it becomes routine to you. It's become heter to you. You don't feel it's wrong. So when you don't feel it's wrong at all, Hashem doesn't give you the credit of, maybe you would have stopped on your own. Hashem says at that point, you've done it three times already. You no longer have the cheskat kashrut. Which means, when a Jew, a Jew always is looked at at cheskat kashrut, which means, there is a chazaka. Chazaka is once something is done more than two times or three times in some case, then, then it's like you always are uh, 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 looked upon as if that's who you are or that's what you do. Like, like, a, like, okay, like a cow, that, uh, an ox that gores, right? It, it gores. Once it gores like three times, then it, that, there's a chazaka that's a shor mu'ad. It's a, it's a goring cow. Now if it gets out or whatever it is, the, the, the owner is going to be very much responsible because now you knew that it's been marked as a goring cow, it's a wild beast. It's no longer, if it's once, it's an accident. But once it happens more, then it's like it's not an accident, it's a wild animal. Something's wrong with it, right? So too here, when a Jew repeats the sin, then you no longer have the cheskat kashrut. You're not looked upon as a kosher person anymore. Now you have that blemish and it counts as who you are. You're going to do it no matter what. If you hadn't been stopped by whatever natural means that stopped you, you would have done it. Hashem's not going to look at you and say, well, you know, we'll give him credit. Maybe he wouldn't have done it. And that's why it's so important to do teshuvah. Sincere teshuvah. Because if we really repent for our mistakes, at least we don't have these things count for on our road. Getting burnt for undone mistakes, uncommitted mistakes. <coughs> now we have to understand something. Like I said, only, only Hashem knows in our hearts. Right? So, only Hashem knows the punishment of a person for different sins. Different people are different ways, you know? And different sins for different people are different calibers. One person that has, that, that has different kinds of challenges committing the same exact avera as someone else that has had different challenges in their life and some committing the same exact avera are not the same avera. Different people are judged differently according to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And only Hashem knows that. I heard something really beautiful from Rabbi Olbam. He said that, by, by the Sota, Sota was a woman that was accused by her husband of being with another man. When he had explicitly told her that he's, she is not allowed to be alone in a room with that man. He had suspicions over some, some person, and he had said, it's called Kinui, he gives her a warning, telling her, I forbid you to be alone with that man in a room. And she was alone with that man, and again, she becomes a Sota. And the Sota is given this waters of the Beit HaMikdash with a parchment with the parsha of, of, of Sota written on it and she drinks the water. If she's guilty, she blows up, right? It's a very uh, uh, crazy scene. And it's all happening in public. This is all in public. So everybody try to get her to re regret it, try to get her to admit it so that they don't have to, they, they, she shouldn't go through it, right? She goes through it. If she's guilty, she dies on the spot. If she's not, she's blessed with children if she doesn't have children. If she does have children, she's going to have more children. If she was only giving birth to girls, she's going to start having boys. If she was giving birth to boys, she was going to start having girls. If she was having kids that were not so smart, her kids are going to become amazingly smart. They're going to be geniuses. I mean, all the brachot for generations to come. So they ask an unbelievable question. Why does she get blessings? She did an isur. She did an isur. She had yichud with a male. She's not, no, she is not, a, the woman is not allowed to be alone with a man in a room. Regardless. That's a, she was, no, no, no. She was caught alone with the man in a room, but she didn't commit any avara with him. But the fact that she was alone with another man, that itself is an isur. That's not allowed. So, so, I, 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 so why is she getting a reward over here? 
She still did something extremely wrong. No, so the Chachamim wanted to do it and he didn't do it. No, the Chachamim say that because of the shame and the other, of the shame and the embarrassment she goes through publicly to drink that water. Everybody watching, knowing that she was, sus you know, she, there was a, her husband had suspicion over her, and, and knowing all of that, Hashem says that itself is punishment enough. They're rewarding today for that too. It's called reality TV. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> that becomes the punishment, the money, right? and then after that, it's brachot. That just goes to show us, Hakadosh Baruch Hu knows exactly where we are in life. He knows our emotions. Knows exactly how we're feeling. So we should never think that, ah, you know, why did this happen, or why did that happen, or how? He knows. He knows what difficult times we have with our challenges. He knows when we make mistakes, how much challenge that mistake was for us. So we, when we do Teshuvah sincerely, He knows. He knows where it comes from. Only He knows, and nobody else.